And we are live. So if you are a service entrepreneur, ser service entrepreneur, service-based entrepreneur, or an online course creator, and you want to successfully scale to 50% more revenue this month and sustain it, get a hat rack. Now, <laughs> before you haphazardly jump on Amazon and get some random hat rack. Who knows, maybe you do need one, but give me a few minutes because what I'm going to do is share with you one of the most important strategies that we take all of our clients through to help them stop sabotaging their scaling efforts, which results in huge sustainable bumps in revenue. And it's a strategy that you can immediately apply today as well. Hey, it's Wei, and in case you don't know who I am, I am the CEO and co-creator of the Scale Up and Out program. And over the last 20 years, my business partner, Lisa, and I have used our patented technology and system to help thousands of entrepreneurs and leaders all over the world to do just that. Scale up and out of the day-to-day -day grind of your business without sacrificing revenue and growth. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you just one of those amazing strategies that we do to help our clients stop sabotaging their scaling growth so that they can get huge bumps in their revenue in a month, but more importantly, help sustain it. So let's go ahead and jump right in because each of these videos, I'm going to share a tip, a strategy, or exercise that you can immediately use and we can use it right away. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I kind of like pre-populated. This, this, this strategy is still is based out of, uh, out of our framework um, in phase one, actually, the, the first part, which is the scaling structure stress test. It's a strategy of that. I drew a little hat rack here just to help you understand why I said a hat rack, because most of us as entrepreneurs, we're used to wearing multiple hats. Even after we hire people, have more technology, as a tech stack that runs the majority of our business, at that point, wearing multiple hats will always slow our ability to scale. And that's why I said it's time to get a hat rack to hang up those multiple hats and only keep the ones that you are ideally designed and meant to use as a leader and entrepreneur in your business, okay? So if we were to look at this, okay, and we're gonna draw a hat here, Maybe it's a hat for paying the bills. Maybe it's a hat to do sales, okay? And maybe it's a hat to go get the water for the office. Believe me, I've done that before, okay? So you become um, you become really good, especially if you bootstrapped your business. You're used to wearing a lot of hats, but we forget that as we grow, we need to shift out of that dynamic. And I get it. Sometimes it's the economies of scale and you know we can't afford to get people to do that work. Well, this is where I'm going to talk about how we do what we call, uh, we call this a scaling gap analysis, which then leads to once you identify the gap, then you have to apply what we call a gap spackle. Okay, so what happens in a scaling structure stress test and, and part of this strategy is we simplify what we focus on in an organization to scale. So we call this the easy three to make it a lot easier as, for us. And, like, uh, and I've, I always talk about this because excuse my writing, um, easy three is, I don't care if you're a startup or if you're a Fortune five, 500 or 50 or even one company, all organizations have these three main easy focuses and areas when it comes to scaling, okay? You have your acquisitions pillar, you have your fulfillment pillar, and then you have your operations pillar. That's it. Every organization, if you want to scale, these are the three main areas you want to make sure are structurally sound to handle the scale. We have seen so many times businesses destroy themselves when they scale without making sure these pillars are, the, you know, the foundations are, are, are taken care of, okay? So what does this have to do with you scaling to 50% more revenue this month? Because what happens is this is that we'll look at this. You want to look, take a look at your organization from this standpoint. All these hats that you see over here, they will fall into one of these parts of the easy three. Okay, even the water, the water is hat this one. Oops, I drew it to the wrong. Water hat should be actually over here, operations. <laughs> okay, so what you want, what we then end up doing, we take our, take our clients to this gap analysis and we say, okay, great. Let's look at all the activities that you are doing as an entrepreneur and see where all those activities are falling under. Now, most of the time what happens is uh, we get to a certain point where we either have a human being 
running these, right, in these parts of our organization. If we don't have a human being, and this is especially true for solopreneurs, so we can help solopreneurs um, scale, It's we call it a tech stack. I can just draw a stack of stuff here, okay? So in this day and age, we live in a beautiful time where we can use technology to run entire divisions and run our business so that we as entrepreneurs, we as leaders can focus on what we're particularly good at. Had one client, she was I was asking her, I was like saying, okay, who do, do you have people running your operation? She goes, yes. Okay, say like, great. Uh, star here. Do you have someone running your fulfillment? Yes, great. It's like, who do you have running your acquisitions? And I'm like looking for like the largest part of her organization. She goes, nobody, it's just me. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, but here's where it got really interesting because I said, okay, well, then let's look at how, what you're doing every single day. Every single day, she was wearing all these different hats, running like crazy all over her organization with multiple locations. And she was doing work almost like double what these other people in her organizations were doing. She was doubling it as a way to kind of like a level of redundancy and it was wasting time and energy. Remember, we all have a finite time and energy. So what, she, what we did was we said, okay, great. Well, you have a tech stack running for these and you have people running these areas. Stop doing these areas every day and just focus here. This is what you're doing for the next month, and that's it. And she goes, but, 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 wait, but, but. And he's like, you, you put your time, energy, and effort hiring, training, and put all these people in place there, and you're not letting them do it. In the case of a solopreneur, you put and your time and energy to all put build this tech stack to run all these different things, and you're not letting it run its course so you can stress test it, right? And so what we did was, immediately had her focus all her energy on the acquisitions area and did what I like to call daily RPAs, which stands for Revenue Producing Activities. And so what we did, no matter what you do every single day, this is your Bible for the next month. You're going to do three, at least three RPAs. And let me define what an RPA is, okay? A revenue producing activity, I'm going to switch over here out of here so you can see me. A revenue producing activity is what we, how, I, how we like to define it is, is an activity that when you do it, it's one derivative. In other words, the byproduct of your action will, has the greatest potential of leading to revenue flow. Okay, that's why it's called revenue producing activity. For example, building a website is not an RPA because there's so many steps after you build the website that will then lead to a sale or revenue. Okay, um, reaching out to an old lead that's a revenue producing activity. Okay, activating uh, or sending out an email to your email list promoting a, a, a promotion or service that is a revenue producing activity. Even going out to speak at an event to promote your business or to go on a podcast promoting an offer, that's a revenue producing activity. Now, that's a little tricky. If you go out and you actually do um, a podcast, but you don't promote yourself, that is not a revenue producing activity. So yeah, call to action, have a call to action, okay? Always make an offer at some point, okay? But anyway, so that's, a re that's what revenue producing activity. So going back to here, what we did was we had her do three RPAs every single day. So if all you did today was say, okay, great, for the next month, I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically let my team that is handling fulfillment uh, and, and operations, or if, I, if I'm not, I don't have a team and I have a tech stack, then, and I, that way I can focus on the RPAs acquisitions, you will get more sales, especially if you already know that you can get sales if you simply put more time into it, okay? But that was the way she was uniquely designed. Everybody is different because here's the thing. What if you are not strong in acquisitions and you have a tech stack and you have people there in acquisitions, but you're more about fulfillment? Well, then guess what? Doing the same thing on the fulfillment side and letting the not getting involved with the acquisition operations will also lead to more revenue. We've seen it over and over again that just because you yourself aren't putting energy into acquisitions, Getting yourself out of it is actually what's creating the problem. So let's talk about this gap analysis because when you start doing this, what you're going to notice is this, is that um, 
you're going to notice that you're going to have some gaps, right? It's not going to look like this, right? Let's say this is one of the pillars. It's going to look like this, and there's going to be bottlenecks, right? And you can say, wait, how do I fix those bottlenecks, right? Well, those bottlenecks is what we call, we identify through our gap analysis work that we do in our strategies. And then how we, how we what I like to call spackle this, okay? The, te the spackle, okay, is the gap spackle is what we like to call it. You have a choice. It's either tech or human spackle, right? You fill the gap with tech or another human being, not you, another human being. And I'm telling you, for the economies of scale, tech is phenomenally cheaper than human spackle. But the nice thing about human spackle, it evolves, and it can evolve autonomously without you. So it's kind of worth the investment, whereas tech, it requires uh, intervention after it gets to a certain point, it needs update, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, there's a whole strategy, and we go much deeper on that in our program when we work with our private clients and stuff like that. But just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. So anyway, hopefully you found that helpful and you can see how like if you just focus on optimizing the easy three, recognizing, organizing all the activities that everybody's doing, including yourself every single day, not on a hat rack, but on the, on the acquisitions and fulfillment and operation pillars, you will start to see how, why we can quickly help you scale to 50% or help our clients scale to 50% more revenue a month and sustain it because we're spackling those gaps so they stop becoming bottlenecks to your scalability, your growth, and your revenues. Now, if you want um, the if you want the revenue, if not the revenue, if you want the um, the worksheet or the training that the free access to the training and revenue. <laughs> What are we talking about here? Oh, I had a little distraction here on my screen. I'm like going, what's going on here? But anyway, um, I put together uh, free access to um, the worksheet and the 30 minute training that our private clients get just to go deeper into this and other scaling strategies. So just drop a comment below if you want access to that and just message me and we'll, we'll talk about it and I'll send it over to you. But other than that, hope you found this to be helpful. And if you have any questions about what I talked about or any feedback, if you like it, you don't like it, if you're confused, if you're lost, whatever, just comment below and I'll do the best I can to um, respond and uh, have a conversation with you. But other than that, it's a Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. All right, talk to you soon.